Today, I'm going to take you on to a journey to a world of nature-inspired technology. I'm a mechanical engineer and a material scientist. I'm interested to look in natural or biological system, take their best idea to create new materials, and use these materials for different applications. Today, I'm going to show you two examples, two stories. And hopefully, through these two stories, you will gain an appreciation on how simple observations in nature, adding a little bit of imagination, can lead to advanced materials technology that can impact our everyday life. So, are you guys ready to listen to the story and take on to the journey with me? Yeah. Great. So, let me begin the journey uh, with an end. What you're looking at here is a carpenter ant. Like many other ants, they're exceptional climbers. They can climb on any surface that you can imagine. So what contribute their exceptional climbing abilities? If you take out a very powerful microscope and look at the feet, this is what it will look like. This is the feet of an ant, okay? And if you look at the scale bar, 10 micrometer here, this is about one-tenth of the diameter of a hair, really tiny. So on the feet of an ant, it is equipped with this powerful cores that helps them to, quip, uh, to grab on rough terrain. And not only that, it is equipped with a adhesive pad that secretes oily fluid that helps them to attach on smooth surface by capillary forces. So this ant can walk on both rough and smooth surface. It seems that they can conquer any land and mountains, but not to this specific plant. What you're looking at here is a Lepantus pitcher plant. Any one of you have seen a pitcher plant before? Some of you, excellent. The reason why it is called pitcher plant because its shape looks like a pitcher, okay? And it is also a carnivorous plant, meaning that it eats insects, okay? But unlike Venus flytrap, which have an active uh, uh, movement to, ca to capture insects, like a mouth that open and close to capture the insect, this pitcher plant just sits there. It doesn't move at all. So the question is, how can they capture insects if they don't move at all? The secret lies at the surface of the rim. Their rim can get really slippery when it is wetted. Okay? So curious about how it works? Let me show you a video. When the surface of the rim is really dry, it's not slippery at all. As you can see, ants can walk on this surface, no problem. However, after a rainy day, when the surface becomes fully wetted, the surface becomes so slippery that none of the ants can stick on it and just slide off from this slippery slide. Look at those. So sad, right? <laughs> so why is that? Why the surface becomes so slippery when it is wetted? Let's go back to look at this picture plan, and let's take out our powerful microscope to look at the surface of this rim again. So if we take a um, microscopic picture on, at the surface of the rim, this is how it would look like. Okay, the rim of the picture plan consists of micro scale landscape, like this picture. And you see the scale bar there is 200 micron. It means that it's about twice the size of hair diameter. They are real tiny. And this micro scale landscape actually acts like a sponge. It helps to trap a thin layer of water set very stably on the surface. If you still remember how ants attach on surface through their oily feet, and if this oily feet is stepping on this water-infused sponge, what happened? We know that water and oil don't mix, right? So they are kind of like sitting or, or walking on this ice skating ground, right? It's like us, we are doing ice skating, but down the slope. Like the ant, they just slide down to the plant. That is why it is. So inspired by this concept, a few years ago, when I was still at Harvard University working with Joanna Eisenberg, we have developed this material called SLIPS. It stands for Slippery Liquid Infused Porous Surfaces. This material can be made in three simple steps. First, we start with a porous or textured material, something like a sponge. And then we add lubricant to it. This lubricant can be water or oil, some, some liquid that have a very strong chemical affinity with the solid matrix. And afterwards, that is your SLIPS. It can repel anything that is immiscible when it comes into contact. So this is great. So now we have a synthetic material that might act like a picture plant surface, but we still need to prove it, right? In order to prove it, we really do put a carpenter ant 
and a piece of jam on this lips. So what you're going to see in this video, I'm going to flip this bottle over and see what happened. This end and the jam just cannot grab on anything, just slide right down, okay? So you might ask, this end might be start as immobile, right? That's why it falls down, right? It's not moving. So in order to answer this question, we have done another experiment showing that this end is completely healthy. What you're looking at in this video, at the top part, the white color part is a Teflon coating. And we all know that Teflon is super long sticky because you put it on your cooking pan. At the bottom panel, it's a slips coating. So let's see what this end, how this end will react, okay? So this end is warming up, and then walk in this Teflon surfaces. So far, it's doing pretty good. Until when it start move on this slips coating, it just give up and walk back out. <laughs> There's nothing he can do. Too bad. So this is great. So we have shown that we can make a synthetic material that can do what Petri Plan does. So this is great. But we can engineer this surface such that it can do Petri Plan cannot do. Indeed, slips has a number of very exceptional property that I'm going to show you uh, next. First of all, slips is super long sticky. And one of the best comparison to compare the long stickiness of slips is by using Teflon, okay? In this video, what you're going to see is I'm going to put two scotch tape on it and peel it off. The one who doesn't get attached by the scotch tape is the one who's the winner. So let's take a look with that. So we have two scotch tape on the slips, on the Teflon, one, two, three, boom, right? So slips is really long sticky. Even Teflon can get picked up by the scotch tape, but not slips. So this is great. Also, we can engineer slips so that it can repel any kind of liquids. In this case, I use crude oil as an example. Most of you have played with cooking oil before if you cook, okay? Crude oil is something that is even stickier than cook cooking oil, okay? In this example, you see that the crude oil doesn't stick on slips, but sting on everything else, including the porous Teflon and aluminum, okay? And you can engineer this surface such that it can repair a broad range of fluid. So this is great. So far, we have shown that slips is super long sticky, liquid repellent, and slips is also self-cleaning. What you're looking at in this example, if we contaminate the surface with some kind of dust, in this case, carbon dust, just by putting a drop of liquid on top of the surface, tilting this material back and forth, all the dust get magically picked up by this liquid, and the surface rendered clean again. So this is great. So slips is liquid repellent, non-sticky, and self-cleaning. So this would be a slick solution to a broad range of sticky problems that we see in our daily life, right? <laughs> Let me give you a few examples, okay? In the biomedical space, you might know that uh, blood coagulation and biofouling of medical devices and implants lead to significant mortality worldwide. So this is a bad problem. In order to solve this problem, we can engineer slips such that it is blood repellent as shown in this video, okay? As sticky as blood job, it doesn't sting on slips, but it sting on everywhere else, including Teflon and glass material, okay? Just a few years ago, uh, my colleagues from Harvard University have shown that by putting this slippery coating inside medical devices such as catheter, it can effectively prevent blood coagulation for up to eight hours or beyond. So this is very important. So, so far I've shown you that slips can repel blood, how about bacteria? I think many of us doesn't like bacteria, right? Because they cause a lot of problem. Indeed, bacteria cause over 700,000 hospital-related infection, which kills about 75,000 people just in the United States per year. So this is bad. And we can engineer slips such that this is bacteria repellent. In this video, what you're showing, again, on the left-hand side, we use Teflon as a control, and on the right-hand side is slips. We put two drops of bacteria fluid and let them sit there for 24 hours. So after 24 hours, bacterial biofilm will be formed on the Teflon surface. As you can see, the drop is just stuck there. But on slips, the, the drop that still maintains its mobility, indicating that bacteria doesn't really accumulate on the surface. If this doesn't convince you, we have further tried to put slips and the Teflon coating inside a catheter and then flow bacteria solution inside this catheter ex over extended period of time. After 24 hours, 
This is what you're going to see. On the left-hand side is a Teflon control surface. So we take an optical microscopic image to look at the interface between the fluid and the solid. Each individual green dots you see here are individual bacteria. So you, so you see that there are so many bacteria colonized on the surface just right after 24 hours. But on slips, it's still maintained fairly clean, okay? Let's do something more extreme. Let's keep doing this experiment for up to seven days. This is what happened. On the control surface, you can't even see individual bacteria because what happened is this individual bacteria connects together from a three-dimensional community, what we call the biofilm. So there are cluster of bacteria. You can't even map them individually. But on slips, it's still fairly, fairly clean. It is anti-fouling. So we have shown that in the laboratory, slips can effectively reduce bacteria accumulation up to 96 to 99%. And we have tried many kinds of bacteria, including bacteria that cause food poisoning, pneumonia, and sepsis, and slips just works. Okay? So far, we have shown that slips can be used as a long fouling coating on medical device. Indeed, slips can also be used as a sensor. So imagine in this situation, you have a very large water droplet, and you just want to detect a few molecules inside this droplet. It is a very challenging task because it is analogous to finding a needle inside a haystack. It's very difficult to do. One way we can detect the molecules is by concentrating all the molecules into one single spot. Hopefully, that increases the probability of finding them. But that is not as easy as it sounds, because for those of you who like to drink tea or coffee, you're probably aware of this coffee ring effect. If you put a drop of coffee with coffee particles inside this droplet and let it evaporate, what happens is that this coffee particle, instead of concentrating in one spot, it just spreads everywhere. So that's the coffee wing effect that you see. However, if you put the same coffee droplet on slip's surface, this is what happens. As the droplet evaporates, all the molecules and particles are going to be concentrated into one single spot, and you can see those light-emitting molecules individually. And until at the end, when the droplet fully evaporates, you can finally find the cluster of those particles or molecules. Okay. So by combining this slippery surface and advanced optical detection method, my research group have recently successfully detected chemical and biological molecules down to single molecule level. Imagine using this technique to detect disease-associated disease molecules inside a drop of blood or saliva for early cancer detection. Isn't it wonderful? So, so far I have shown you that this slippery coating or slippery surface can be used for long filing coating for medical device and sensor. These slips can also be able to solve our water scarcity problem. You might have known that, or you might not. There are 4 billion people are under severe water scarcity at least one month in a year. This is a big problem, and this is going to be a bigger problem because as the time goes, we have more people. Indeed, it is projected that by 2050, we will have close to 10 billion people on Earth. So water is going to be a big problem. But how can we solve this problem? One solution we have is to create a low-cost, decentralized water supply. And one technology to enable that would be to collect water directly from air. You may have a question. Do we even have sufficient water in air for us to drink? The answer is yes. We have so much water that it is sufficient to feed every single one on the planet for 10 years if we can capture all the water in the air. And this source is renewable because water evaporates and gets circulating across the globe. But the problem is, how can we effectively collect this water onto a surface and transport it away? So just recently, my research group has developed this new material called slippery rough surface that can effectively collect water from air and transport them away. As the name implies, slippery rough surface, it is not only slippery, but also has a very high surface area such that it can collect water very effectively. In this video, you're seeing that uh, I'm putting slippery rough surface and slips side by side. You can see that slippery rough surface actually can collect way much more water than the control slip surface. In the laboratory, we have quantified that slippery rough, rough surface can collect around 10 times more water than a typical fog harvesting material and we are still working on this. So this is great. Collecting water from air could be one potential solution to end this water scarcity problem. 
But there are also other solutions. But before I show you the next solution, let me, answer you, let me ask you this question. This is a picture plan. Does the shape of this picture plan reminds you of something that you use every day, and that something consumes a lot of water? What is that? Any, any guess? Toilet. toilet. Excellent. Fantastic guess. And they look alike. This picture plan and the toilet, they look quite similar, right? So now we think about that. Some of the most water-efficient toilet we use in the United States takes about 1.6 gallons per flush. Every one of us flush a few times a day, and now times this number to the global population. We flush a lot of water down the drain every day. And how much water we flush? It's, about, it's over 141 billion liters of water. There's a lot of zero to it, but how, how, how much water is it? It's equivalent to the water consumption for over 300 million people per day. That's the population of the United States. So we flush a lot of water down the drain. So to solve this problem, uh, my research group has recently developed this new slippery surface coating called Liquid and Change Smooth Surface Sulfur-Less, L-E-S-S. This coating, you can apply on any smooth surfaces, including toilet surfaces, and the most important thing is super long sticky, even the stickiest solids that you find. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to show you this video next, okay? Excited, right? So on the right-hand side is a typical toilet. That's actually the best toilet you can get commercially. And on the left-hand side is a toilet with our coating. So this white substance here, it's not what you think, okay? This is a, this is a synthetic poop that we make in our lab. We actually got this recipe from our collaborator from Canfield University, who's making their own waterless toilet, okay? So you see in this video that this substance is really sticky, okay? It stick on the regular toilet, but on the slippery um, toilet, you see, okay, it's coming up soon. There's this thing coming down. It just slide, like the end sliding off from the picture plan, right? So in the laboratory, we have shown that by putting our coating you can actually reduce the water consumption for the cleaning by nine, up to 90%. Isn't it great? So not only you can uh, reduce the water footprint, the most important thing is this material is super long sticky, long fouling. You can actually reduce the number of times you need to clean your toilet. Who doesn't want that, right? Right? This is great. So with that, let's move on to part two of the story, which is related to filtration. Are you guys ready? Okay. Let's go. I'm sure most of you probably drink tea or coffee. And for those of you who do, I'm sure that you know how a coffee filter or tea infuser work. It works by having this membrane with some holes in it, which lets small particles to go through and blocking large particles, right? This filtration mechanism has been used for hundreds of years with some of the earliest examples such as sieving, right? But have you ever imagined that if we can create a material that can do a reverse filtration, meaning that you let large particles to go through but blocking small objects? That sounds really counterintuitive, right? You don't see that in our daily life because they don't exist. However, in nature, in microscopic world, some microorganisms actually use this reverse filtration mechanism to consume food. In this beautiful video, what you're going to see is two microorganisms. What's happening is that the large organism is going to eat the small organism, okay? And the way how it does it is by opening up its cell membrane and conformally wrapping around this smaller organism. Look at that, this small microorganism tried to escape. It couldn't, right? And at the end of this process, the cell membrane of this large microorganism just closes it up and self heal Right, look at, at the end of this process. It's just self heal And throughout the whole process, no small particle or small molecule inside the cell is leaking out to the external. So this cell membrane kind, shows, kind of shows you that large optical can enter, but not leaking out small molecule or particle, right? And key to this process is that the material itself has to be self healing and has to have the ability to conformally wrapping around the object. So inspired by this concept, my research group has recently developed a self-healing liquid membrane can do just that. 
This is a video demonstration. What you're looking at here are two particles, one small particle and one large particle. They release at the same height. And look at when the small particle interact with the membrane, it just traps there. And when the large particle passing through, look at the self-healing of the membrane, right? So this membrane allows you to capture small particle, but letting large object to go through. So this is great. So now we have the materials that do exactly what the cell membrane does. But that's not enough, because as engineer, we want to know the working principle of how this works so that we can engineer a better membrane, right? So to do that, um, one of my group members, now Dr. Birger Brasich, who is also in the audience there, okay. <laughs> so she studied the governing mechanism of this reverse filtration. So what she discovered is as follows. In order for the particle to pass through this membrane, it has to carry sufficient kinetic energy so that it can break through the surface tension of the membrane, okay? And for smaller particle, if it doesn't have smaller, if it doesn't have sufficient kinetic energy, it doesn't break through the membrane, okay? Since kinetic energy is related to the size of the particle as well as the traveling speed of the particle, so larger or faster particle would go through the membrane, but smaller or slower moving particle wouldn't. This is analogous to a liquid trampoline. If you have a person which is bigger, jumping on this trampoline, he can break through this trampoline and the trampoline self heal But if you put a baby or a small kid jumping on a trampoline, he or she can never break through the trampoline. So that's the mechanism. And to quantify this mechanism, uh, Birgit has defined this E star parameter, which is simply the ratio between the surface energy of the film um, and the kinetic energy of the particle. So with this E star parameters, so if E star is larger than one, meaning that the, the kinetic energy particle of the particle is smaller than the surface energy of the film, which means that the, the, part, the particle will be retained. On the other hand, when E star is smaller than one, meaning that the kinetic energy of the particle is now larger than the surface energy of the film, the particle will go through. Knowing this quantitative relationship is important because now we can engineer the membrane for specific size selectivity, okay? So, in our world, a lot of the harmful objects are typically on a smaller size. If you think about virus, bacteria, dust, allergen, or disease-carrying insects, they're typically smaller size. And with this membrane, now we can engineer it so that we will block out all these harmful objects and letting larger and more useful objects to pass through. In this case, we draw honeybee as an agriculture example. Okay? So, to show that this membrane can actually retain leaf flying insect, we have done an experiment here. What you're seeing here, many fruit flies inside this jar, and on top of it, it has a membrane. So look at this particular fruit fly in the center of the bottle. It's flying towards the membrane, and then it got captured. The reason is that this fruit fly doesn't have sufficient kinetic energy to pick through the surface tension of the membrane, and that's why it is retained. So this reverse filtration mechanism is actually very powerful because it allows applications that were previously unachievable using any solid-based membrane. One example for that is for surgery. Imagine putting this membrane on top of an open wound. So doctors can push through the surgical tube through the membrane while blocking dust or, or, or bacteria, as indicated in a pink color here as an illustration. So you see the surgery can go through the membrane while blocking all the small particle. And also this membrane is transparent. It doesn't block the visibility. And also you can freely move these tubes through the membrane. And you just saw an incision, proce incision procedure just, just carry out. So this is very important because it allows surgery to be carried out in places where high quality facility, surgery facility is available, right? So you can create a clean surgery environment anywhere you go. The next application is related to waterless toilet. I know, right? We do toilet application a lot. <laughs> yeah, but imagine putting this membrane on a waterless toilet where it lets the solid waste to pass through and blocking the unpleasant odor. Right? That is important because we know that waterless toilet or latrine, they don't smell good. In this example, what you're seeing here, you see there's some white foggy gas coming out on one end. This is just for flow visualization. 
and we use tic tac to simulate the solid waste this time. Okay, so this tic tac can pass through the membrane very nicely, and you see there's no gas coming out because the membrane is blocking the gas passage. So this membrane can be used as an auto barrier for waterless toilet or large room, which is a big problem because there are still 1.1 billion of people practicing open defecation. And one of the reasons is because these toilets do not smell good. Okay. So with that, that concludes the second part of the story. I hope through these two stories that shows you the power of nature inspiration. With more than 8 million species on the planet, there are plenty of novel ideas or technologies can be derived from this species. All you need to do is to look at nature carefully, study them, and exercise your creativity. You might be the next one who can come up with a novel nature-inspired technology that can help to make the world a better place. So with that, I will end here, and thank you very much for listening. <laughs>